Welcome everyone to episode 9 on the Hardcore Iron Man's Road to Questcape. In our last episode we made some huge strides on the account, making a start on the quests for Sunspear, unlocking Devotion, and going to our first Beastmaster. We also started making some inroads for the requirements for Lunar Diplomacy and Desert Treasure. This episode I want to see if I can't get at least one of those big quests knocked out, and maybe dip our toes into a little bit more PBM. Starting out with a Mole Reaper. Skull 56 constitution, dope, and combat level 80. Oh, I think that means that I will have access to a couple more reaper tasks now. That could be spicy. And speaking of spicy, our next reaper was a cow fight queen task. A friend offered to come and help out, so we duoed the reaper and had a bit of fun. After that, we did a few daily challenges. And that got us to 69 herb lore. Nice. We can make some anti-fires now. That'll be absolutely delightful. Maybe even start doing our KBD tasks. And also, we can unlock dark magic now. Let's go. We actually have an aura that'll do DPS. That seemed like some sort of foreshadowing, because the next day we got a KBD reaper. So I popped to Tavoli Dungeon to grab a few blue dragon scales, and I made a couple of anti-fire potions before getting stuck into the task. Alright, let's go KBD. Try not to die. Nice! I just soloed the KBD! Bruh! Ooh. We just shaved 5.4 seconds off! Okay, I think the, tr the, the strat for this is literally just G-Staff spam. Just didn't eat enough, just didn't eat enough. Okay. Oh, sheesh, 112, we just have 24 seconds off that, no way. Oh, I just got a dragon, oh, pong. <laughs> That's legit a piss item, bruh. And I can't even equip it yet, oh my god. Let's crack up. Right, finish him, finish him, finish him. No! Okay, got him. Nice! Another 50 U logs. After that, it was off to the artisan's workshop to start work on the 50 smithing grind, as a few of the quests I have my eyes on need this. The plan is to make five adamant burial sets with some all that I mined sneakily while I was editing. I may just get this started for now and come back for 50 a little bit later. I think for now it might be time to go finish building our full tier 1 fort. I recorded this before Murder on the Border came out, so there's no kitchen or guardhouse to build just yet. We built the town hall, chapel and command centre to complete the tier 1 fort, but I didn't have the funds or techs to build tier 2. While I was working on this I was keeping an eye off of random wilderness events to try and make a little bit of GP and maybe snag some other helpful items. Alrighty, oh nice! We, uh, we got a fire making level up to 53 out of that. Alrighty, let's check the small bags first. Oh, nice. Two necronium salvage. That's going to be some alcohols. Ah, uh, that's all. Okay. Very wealthy rewards. Oh, no. I got more dragon rider boots. They were supposed to reduce the drop rate on that today as well. All right. Tears of Guthix time. It's our time up. We got 84 tiers and six summoning levels from 33 up to 39. Nice. And we hit 1500 total level. That is absolutely massive. I mean, we did boost all the way to 1504. Nice. Uh, 47 smithing. Nice. Finally back to the smithing to get the last couple of levels. Nothing can distract me now. Unless... Raw's up. I'm actually going to pop to Anachronia and do some laps. And the main thing I was after, codex pages for double surge. 
of which I need 500. We really want to chase this when Royal Bosses is active, as it not only increases the XP rates, but also the drop rates for new unique items, such as the pages. Well, that's the raw over. We got ourselves two agility levels up to 55, and we got 22 codex pages. With that distraction aside, I could get back to hammering out those last few smithing levels. Oh, sheesh. We just got 50 smithing. Epic. We now have all the levels we need for Between a Rock and for Cabin Fever, for Legends Quest, for Dark Task 5, and for Desperate Times. That is absolutely huge. Should we see what our Reaper task is going to be for today? Eight Croesus. It's a shame I can't quite pull a four man together. Except for the fact that another one of our wonderful Twitch mods escaping died offered to help out and make some magic happen. So let's see how another four man hour at Croesus goes. Oh, <laughs> yo! First killer, Mr. Pay gets a piece of crit bloom. Let's go! Oh, we got manuscript. Oh my god! Flu just got a foul torch! We need to drop the coach! We've got two kills left on the hour and the Reaper! Hi! Wait, what? What was that achievement? Oh, Gorthay receives thanks for Gorbeck! Last 10k, let's go! Do you reckon I'll get. Nah, we won't get a Slayer level out of this. <gasps> yes! Bro! Let's go! Dudes! Oh, I had a milk cash. Oh, I'm 15 salvage, bruh. That spore hammer drop was unexpected, but awesome. It requires 80 smithing, 88 mining, and 88 fishing to repair, but I can boost those with stews. It'll still be a while before I can repair it, but when I can, that 10% increased mining crit chance and 35% more crit damage will be awesome for both mining training and mining at Croesus. All right, where are we up to? What are we doing? I feel like I want to get some quests done. Alright, because if we don't done the quests, well, then we won't get our quest cape. And the road to quest cape will take a really long time. So, in particular, I wanted to start off with some pirate quests. Starting out with Pirate's Treasure, which didn't give me a quest complete screen for some reason. There's nothing special about this quest, it's just required for the other quests. Then I was on to Rum Deal to unlock the Holy Wrench, which is really handy as it increases the amount of prayer points restored by potions. Then it was off to complete Ghosts Ahoy for an Ectophile, an easy teleport to Port Phasmatis. Then I got distracted again. Hmm, can I get, actually can I bust out Family Crest already? I feel like I can, because I'm actually running pretty dangerously low on food, and before I cook my next batch I kind of want to get cooking gauntlets. Yeah, I'm going to push out Family Crest quest. I got your crest back. Now you're gonna give me some good stuff. Oh yeah, okay, so for family crest quest, we get one quest points and some gauntlets, which are absolutely gonna go to become cooking gauntlets. And the ability to store silver and gold in my ore box and metal bank, heck yes. After quickly snagging our cooking gauntlets to reduce burn rates when cooking, we were back on track with pirate quests, completing cabin fever for access to mostly harmless for the cave horrors later on, and a book of piracy and access to the pub so I can buy stews. Very handy for stew boosting. Alrighty! It must be done. Legacy of Seer Gaze. Another step on the vampire quest line. Legacy of Seer Gaze grants us the blood talisman so we can create blood runes when we get to 77 rune crafting. But who boy was this one a slog. We got there in the end, and we're now one step closer to Sunspear. Nice! Alright, that is Legacy of Seer Gaze completed. We got two quest points. A we XP time. Epic. The next quest on my list, I was going to do Underground Pass. You know, a little to dabble into some Elfie progress there. Hello, King Lathis! Have you got any quests? Oh yeah, the Underground Pass. This might be one of those quests that we just space bar hero through as fast as we can, because I know that can be a bit of a torture. We started the quest at 7.50 game time. How long do we think it'll take? On a low level iron hardcore with 56 agility. So the race was on to see how quickly I could get through Underground Pass. I remember doing this quest a very long time ago and it took me hours. I seem to get pretty lucky on all the obstacles on this go-through, though. And we did it in under 40 minutes. 
Tough quest, my butt. Five quest points! With one extreme and busting out the last few things for Desert Treasure, I want to knock out the final skill requirement for Lunar Diplomacy. 55, woodcutting. Plan for this is chopping Acadia trees in the Menophos district. I want to keep the logs though, so I'm going to have to unlock the deposit box. So I chased down a few soul obelisks and scarabs around Menophos for tier 2 reputation in all the districts, so I could unlock all the deposit boxes. And then we got chopping. There we go, 55 wood curtain. We now have all the levels we need for Lunar Diplomacy. Heck yes! Well, now that we got all the stats for Lunars, I think my low-key skilling grind is just going to be 68 fishing. It's going to take a minute, and I'm going to be on and off doing quests and other stuff in between. But there's level 58. The start. 10 levels to go. We weren't AFK fishing for very long before there was a call for a Beastmaster running clan. The lovely gamer organizing said I could come in my gear if I was brave enough. So let's go. What's the worst that could happen? I guess getting wild by errors is probably one of the worst things that could happen. We survived thanks to our ring of life, but we didn't get loot as we didn't survive in the arena long enough. The Beastmaster spawn. Here we go! Fishing level 60, nice! I suppose now we'll start getting catfish as well, so that means we'll have even better food. I need some better spells! I'm feeling, uh, ancients! But first and foremost, I'm actually gonna start off with Edgar's Ruse, because I really want the Trollheim teleport unlocked. It's just handy to have. And with that, it was time to get some serious questing underway. Edgar's Ruse to unlock God Wars Tally was just the start. After that I went to make some headway into the ham quests, starting off with Death to the Dorgish and foiling Sigmund's evil plan. Then on to the giant dwarf, so I could introduce the dwarves and the cave goblins to each other in another slice of ham. And then we did Land of the Goblins, inadvertently leaving Zanuck trapped. I felt like I should leave the goblin quests there though, so we'll have to rescue Zanuck in our next episode, because I felt like it was time to go unlock Ancients. I have everything required for Desert Treasure except for Temple of Ikov. Okay, all right, let's get the Staff of Armadil. This is like this mage gear, right? So we went on the mission to retrieve the Staff of Armadil, unfractured for Lucian. Unfortunately, the Armadil Knight said he was a bad guy and we couldn't keep the Staff. So we backstabbed Lucian and took a payout from those guys instead. Then it was finally time to tackle Desert Treasure and unlock the coveted ancient spellbook. So we trekked off to the four corners of the world to find the blood, ice, smoke, and shadow diamonds and return them to the pyramid to free Azanadra and claim our reward. Yay! Azanadra's gonna teach us ancient magics for freeing him! There we go! Lovely! We can activate the Lodestone Bandit Camp now. We've got three more quest points. We've got Desert Treasure done, 20,000 magic XP, and access to ancient magics. Huge! Oh, and that takes us past 175 quest points, so let's go south of Arok really quickly and uh, claim our quest die now that we've got Ancients unlocked. Oh, this is well exciting. Massive! Rewards, let's go. Claim our 175 quest point die. Let's roll him. What do we get? What do we get? Ha! <laughs> An adamant plate body H2. And half a mil. That's quite nice. 1522 total. 176 quest points just unlocked. Ancients. Man! Epic. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to tune in next time when we unlock Lunas and a heap of cool quality of life items to help us further on down the track.